A common question that students have for me is how can I paint more consistently? They feel like their paintings are really up and down. Some paintings turned out, some paintings they feel completely lost. Today I'm going to talk about four things that you can do to raise that consistency level in your work to increase the chances of your painting being successful. I think it's important to acknowledge that learning is not just a straight upward trajectory. There are ups and downs along the way. Sometimes you feel more confident than others. You feel like you're really grasping things and then one bad painting and you start to question yourself. So it's important to acknowledge that there are going to be ups and downs and sometimes the best ways to learn are by making mistakes. And we can use that information that we've gained to hopefully become a better painter over time. And we learn little things along the way. And so your trajectory is going to be up and down and up and down, but hopefully trending upward. If you can do these four things, you are more likely to have a successful painting. Number one is to have a plan. Watercolor is an unforgiving medium, meaning that when we make a mistake, it's harder to correct. Once that paper dries and things are all settled, you're kind of left with what you have. So having a plan before you jump in is absolutely crucial. So this can mean just simply thinking through the process. Think through what am I going to do in the first wash, the second wash, the third wash. Thinking through the structure of the painting, identifying the brightest areas of your painting where you want the most light to be and coming up with a plan on how to preserve that light throughout the painting process. An important question that you can ask yourself is what has attracted me to this scene? Ask yourself, why am I painting this particular scene? And this will help give you some clarity on the areas of the painting that you want to emphasize. And by asking these questions and understanding how to build this painting from start to finish will give you a game plan to help you be more successful. So if we're just jumping in and getting started and we haven't thought through these things or thought through the process of how we're going to paint this, we're less likely to succeed. And number two is do some type of study before you jump into the actual painting. You could do a thumbnail sketch to work out your composition. You could do a value study to get you to start thinking about that process of painting light to dark and identifying the big shapes of your scene. Any type of study is wonderful. Thumbnail sketch is great. A value study is even better because when we do this, first of all, you're practicing the drawing you're getting a handle on the composition. And most importantly, you're thinking through the value structures. What areas are going to be the brightest? What is that large middle value connected shape? How am I going to paint it? So you're really doing a lot of the heavy lifting when you do these studies. If you dedicate yourself to studies, you will see a big improvement in your work and a lot more consistency. Doing some of this fundamental work of planning and thinking through your composition, creating that value study, and putting work into thinking through the process before my pencil even touches the paper, I can always tell a difference when I create a value study and put in this time versus when I don't. Giving yourself time to do these things and not being in such a rush to get through to the finished painting will make a big difference. Number three, step back often. So many times when we are painting, we are hovered right over our work and we are getting consumed with certain areas of the painting, but we are forgetting to look at how that area relates to the whole. Take a little note card, put that next to your easel as a reminder that you need to take a step back and look at your whole scene. When we get hyper-focused on certain areas and little marks in our painting, we forget to look at that whole picture and see how everything is relating to each other. Are the values working? Is the composition sound? Am I getting obsessed over something that is not important when it comes to the whole picture of the painting? So get in a habit of stepping back and observing the whole painting. Number four, take your time when possible. Sometimes in watercolor, we have to move quickly. If we are working on a wash and there's a lot ne that needs to happen before this wash dries, we have to move with a sense of urgency. But there are moments in the painting when you can really take your time and reflect. Earlier on, you can take time to lay out your composition. You can take time before you start painting to think about what colors you're gonna need and you can pre-mix those colors. Try to make a lot of these decisions before you touch the paper with a brush 
so you're not just going on the fly and making rash decisions along the way. This is especially important when you have been working on your painting for a while, say you are already near to the end of your painting and you're making these really key decisions on where to put your darks in the scene. And this is a tricky time of the painting because we really want to add, add, add. But if you can work on adding just the minimal amount of information to get your point across, I think you'll be happier with your results. Because a lot of times when we add so much at the end, we end up with an overworked painting. So if we can really take our time during these critical key moments of the painting process, we can think about what we're doing rationally and have a better end result. If you can work on these four things, you will consistently have better paintings along the way. Now that's not to say that we aren't going to hit bumps, we're not gonna make mistakes, of course we are, because that's how we continue to learn and get better. But if we can add this intentionality to our painting practice, I know that you will see better results. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help with these problems my five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.